Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you this drawing of a birch tree with some twisted branches. It's a slightly darker landscape. It was all done in charcoal as usual. As for my materials I used, let me just show you, I used this paper. This is a master's touch sketch paper. It's a decent quality Paper, it's a little bit softer than the one that I normally work on. It's about 8 times 11 inches in size. And as for the drawing tools, I used woodless charcoal pencils, fine charcoal and the usual erasing and blending tools. So once again, here's my new drawing of a tree. Now let's get to the drawing process and let me show you how it was done. As usual, I'm starting with a sketch. I'm not going to create a very elaborate sketch. I just want to give myself a rough idea where everything is going to be. I'm placing uh, the tree, which is going to be the focus of my drawing, in the center of the paper. And there's also going to be some branches uh, from the other trees, nearby trees. And they're kind of going to be overlapping. Now, I was looking at a number of reference photos of what I think are birch trees. And I liked some of them, but I decided to make some changes because I wanted to, I wanted to change the shape of some of these branches and kind of rearrange them a little bit uh, so that it suits my composition a little bit better. So, <clears throat> some of these branches are kind of going to be overlapping, like some of them are in front of the others. And I'm going to have to keep that in mind as I'm drawing, so that I can create depth, I can, so that I can create an illusion of depth in my drawing. And having a lot of these branches which are overlapping is really going to help me with that. Now, like I said, some of these longer branches are coming from the tree, which is my main subject. But some of the other ones, like the one that I'm starting to work on, on the left, is maybe coming from uh, another tree <coughs> nearby. So, none of these have leaves, so it's going to be more like an autumn type of landscape. There's going to be some grouse down there in the lower portion of the drawing. Uh, but up here it's mostly going to be bare twisted branches. Um, as you can see I'm starting to work with a charcoal pencil. The sketch was done with a Stadler HB graphite pencil. And that's pretty much all I'm going to be using the graphite pencil for. Uh, from this point on it's all going to be charcoal. I'm going to be using charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. Right now I'm using a medium charcoal pencil and these are Warris and Woodless charcoal pencils and I use that medium charcoal pencil because it's good for drawing cleaner lines. Now I'm trying to shade the background a little bit and I'm going to shade the background so that I have maybe some um, suggestions of shapes in the back. I'm going to leave a little bit more texture in there. I'm not trying to make it perfectly smooth. So first I went over it with a, pencil, uh, with a piece of vine charcoal and then I realized I should probably cover that uh, using charcoal powder. So I sharpened one of those vine charcoal sticks and I spread that powder with, with a brush. I used a combination of brushes but mostly this larger brush because it gets the job done quicker and it also blends a little bit smoother. So what I accomplished here are a couple of things. First, I have an interesting looking background which is kind of uh, misty 
like we have some objects fading in the distance, who knows? Uh, nothing is defined yet. So on top of that I can draw these uh, objects in the foreground which are far more defined with cleaner edges and more contrast and that alone will capture the interest of the viewer and allow the viewer to focus on the trees in the foreground. However, uh, this background will allow me to uh, create an additional effect because um, because I'm actually going to be adding some trees in the distance and I'm just going to do that uh, by creating some suggestions of shapes, vertical shapes in the distance and the way that you create depth in la landscapes, the way that you create that illusion of distance is you make those trees in the back a lot less defined and also lighter in value and now I'm starting to work on the tree trunk here on the main part of the tree and I'm scribbling a little bit with a medium charcoal pencil but I'm also, be, I'm also going to be using a soft charcoal pencil as well and you can see that I'm trying to produce some kind of texture like there are some horizontal lines there and maybe some uh, lines or folds or corrugations maybe around these uh, uh, places where the where the branches are growing out of the tree trunk and another thing that I'm doing is using a soft charcoal pencil to add in some of the darkest areas because uh, these tree trunks uh, usually are uh, kind of have lighter and darker portions and in order for these lighter portions to stand out I, it, it's also a good idea to shade the background so a little bit more value in the background which I've already done is going to make those lighter values or white parts of the tree stand out even more which is going to give me a more, more of a 3D effect um, I started working on those bra uh, branches on that bough uh, which is just behind my main tree and I tried uh, doing a little bit of work with a graphite pencil but then I decided to do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil and do some of the finer lines with a black colored pencil but most of the work is going to be done with a medium charcoal pencil and here and there I'm going to be adding a touch of uh, soft charcoal pencil. So like I said this larger large bough on the left is going behind this tree growing behind the tree and uh, by making it darker I've kind of allowed the tree in the front to push that branch back and now I'm adding a whole bunch of these smaller branches in the distance and I'm just trying to add a little more detail to them now because some of these lines are very thin and some of them need to be a little bit lighter I can't really use a medium charcoal pencil for that which is why I'm also using a black colored pencil for some of these thinner twigs and branches you can also see that I drew some of these vertical lines with a vine charcoal stick to suggest that there are maybe some shapes of trees in the distance. And now I'm adding some lighter shapes using a pencil eraser to create some maybe uh, smaller birch trees which are a little bit further away, maybe just a few meters away and also a little bit smaller. And I'm also adding a little bit more detail to those trees as well and I'm adding some some more of these branches like maybe there are some shorter trees or bushes there who knows and I'm also adding a little bit of grass and some other type of foliage uh, there at the bottom of the tree so I'm basically trying to create some kind of illusion of detail 
I can't draw every single leaf and every single uh, blade of grass but what I can do is allow the pencil to work for me by producing a rough texture and later I can use that texture to maybe uh, flesh out some of the details using the shapes that I already have. Uh, the famous painter uh, Bob Ross often talked about happy accidents while painting. Well, the messier the medium, the more of these happier accidents you will see. Like, for example, the charcoal. When you create a mess like I did here at the lower left corner of the drawing, opportunities will, present, uh, will be presented to you. So you will start to see some shapes and you will use them. So maybe I see a lighter shape and I can turn that into a root of a tree. Uh, maybe I can uh, pull some other highlights to draw blades of grass, maybe some dry bushes there, maybe some smaller shorter trees, maybe some branches which have, which have fallen off. I don't have to define everything. I can leave some of that to the interpretation of the viewer and the Im imagination of the viewer. So I'm just going to add a few more details to these uh, tree trees or whatever they are in the background. But I don't want to overdo it because I'm going to be putting in most of the work on the tree in the foreground which is my main focus. So Hopefully, if I really put in the work on the texture and the details and the shading on the main tree, those smaller imperfections and lack of detail in the background uh, will not be a problem. In fact, it might actually work to my advantage because by creating a um, far more detailed object in the foreground, we're actually uh, creating a nice contrast and allowing the viewer to focus on the main subject immediately when they look at the drawing. Uh, back to what I was saying, I keep trying to produce texture as I'm shading the tree trunk and I'm creating quite a bit of rough texture. Now later, as you can see, I go over it with a brush, but I just soften that texture ever so slightly, just a little bit. I don't want to ruin those lines that I created. And I want these lighter white portions of the tree bark to stand out. So I'm kind of trying to uh, not to overdo it with the texture on top of them. And I'm trying to make the areas or these cracks in between them a lot darker so that we have a lot of contrast and so that uh, we kind of feel like these uh, white parts of the tree bark are uh, sticking out like uh, the tree bark has more of a 3D appearance. And another important thing that I keep doing is I'm trying to clean up the edges of the tree as well as the boughs and branches because it's very important to have a clean edge so that I can explain to the viewer that this is a separate object which stands out from the background and a clean edge is very important if I want to achieve that effect. So this part of the bow here, this branch, large, large branch here is going to be a little bit lighter because it's kind of bending and one portion of it is facing upwards towards the light source uh, that's why it's getting more light. Now some other parts of the tree trunk are a little bit darker and my light source is pretty much coming from the left side and naturally from above. In most cases the, the light is coming from above but it's usually more on one side than the other. So in this particular case in, on, in my drawing the light source is coming more from the right side. And the shadow side is going to be on the left side. So. I don't know if I got it right the first time, but I'm just going to repeat it one more time in case I made a mistake. So the light source is coming from the right. 
and the shadow side is on the left. All right. So here again, I'm going to try to create a little bit more illusion of detail and some of these lighter, blurrier shapes of trees in the distance. These uh, shapes, these vertical shapes, which are supposed to suggest that there are some trees in the background, they're very important because even though they don't look like much, when you contrast them with a more detailed object in the foreground, you can see how they start to serve their purpose because uh, they give your drawing a lot of depth and allow your main subject, and my main subject is this birch tree that I'm working on, they allow your main tree or your main subject to really stand out against that background. So here I'm going to do a whole bunch of tree uh, branches and twigs and that's going to that's going to take a while. I'm first going to try to do as much as I can with a medium charcoal pencil and later if I feel like I need even thinner shapes I'm going to move on with a black colored pencil. Now just a few quick tips about drawing branches uh, in order to get the shape right First of all, you have to look at your, your reference photos a little bit. You're never going to get it um, as realistic as the real thing, but you can try to imitate the realistic look of branches. And to do that, it's important to understand that they are kind of twisted and uh, that they taper as they grow. And that in order to achieve a realistic look, you need to allow your hand to kind of uh, wobble and shake a little bit maybe and you need to twist the pencil a little bit as you're uh, drawing the branch and that allows you to create these uh, irregular twisted shape that kind of look uh, really realistic and organic and I also decided to add a few more uh, twigs here at the bottom, maybe it's uh, growing from this tree, maybe it's from another tree, uh, who knows, so I'm just adding some more detail to these branches, adding some more of these smaller twigs, just to make everything appear <coughs> even more dense and more realistic. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side, just for the sake of balance. So I just I'm also going to be adding some some of these uh, thinner trees and branches here in the background. And here on the left side you can see uh, how realistic that looks and how much depth I've created. And I also like that smaller white tree that stands out against the background. That's also a nice touch. Uh, but here in the top right corner I still have a little bit more work as well as on these branches on the right side. <clears throat> so I'm just using a, a brush to um, kind of soften well, not really soften, but blend those uh, shapes a little bit so that there's no texture in them. I don't want too much detail on there. And now here at the bottom, I decided to use a soft charcoal pencil to create some darker shapes to kind of separate these tree roots uh, to try to make some suggestions of shapes of twisted tree roots. And I'm going to use a scribbling motion to create some illusion of detail and some texture at the lower right portion of the paper. Uh, so you can see uh, how much uh, illusion of detail I'm creating just by scribbling. And by the way here I'm using a pencil eraser to just uh, erase away some of the uh, portions above these knots, these darker knots on the tree, and when I create a highlight above them, they kind of stick out. It feels like uh, they are sticking out from the rest of the tree trunk. That gives the uh, tree trunk more shape and more uh, volume. And I'm also 
cleaning up the edges, especially the edges in between these darker and lighter areas on the tree bark. And I'm going to move on with the background here in the lower right portion of the paper. And I'm going to start adding some of these bushes and uh, grass and things like that. But first I want to create enough contrast here so that these roots would stand out. I really want them to be a lot lighter um, than the ground that the tree is growing on because the roots are also facing upwards towards the light uh, towards the light source and there are some deep shadows in between them so I want to emphasize that contrast anyway I again I'm using a pencil eraser to create some suggestions of bushes and grass there and going over these roots a few more times just to clean them up as much as possible so that they would stand out in contrast against the background and I'm just adding a little bit more texture and detail here on the right like I said it's all about creating an illusion of detail because I can't draw every single uh, blade of grass or every single twig and now in front of all these bushes I'm adding some of these darker uh, smaller trees or twigs which are kind of sprouting from the ground I want these to stand out against the background and I also want them to uh, f to feel like they're in front of the the trees and the bushes in the back so that I can create even more depth <clears throat> so here I'm putting down some of the finishing touches and I decided to sign my drawing here in the lower right corner unfortunately my camera didn't capture that because uh, I didn't move my I didn't move my drawing upwards just a little bit but you're gonna see the signature soon enough so there it is and that's the finished drawing and I'm just gonna remove this tape so here it is my finished drawing of this birch tree, if it is a birch tree, I removed the tape and I sprayed it with some fixative and now the drawing is finished. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. If you want to see a full length version of this video and many others, you should go to my Patreon channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.